We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags Available on Amazon right now Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. I believe this is episode 49. And today's an interesting subject and I think I'd love to have you stick around if you would. Um, I might touch base on something that's definitely uh, uh, going to affect all of us. But before we do, I need to remind you that Easy Street is syndicated on Good Talk Radio. Uh, Easy Street is also on its own platforms uh, like Spreaker and several other platforms. Please go down to the description below and you'll find all the different pl places and formats to find the show and also find links to our Ranger Rob poopy bags and um, contributing to the show is appreciated, uh, not big money in this stuff and uh, we also want to stay away from main commercials. So yeah, the Ranger Rob poopy bags are going to Good Talk Radio and on the sidebars on either side there's a donation button at PayPal. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, every little bit helps, so uh, please uh, help us out. So today I want to talk about a big paradigm shift, a big change in our life I think is coming. And some people will embrace it and others won't. But I think if you want to live the lives that we have had for so many years uh, and eat the foods and stuff that we've always enjoyed, I think that's going to change. I think it's going to change a lot. And I'm going to talk mainly about meat right now because I'm, I made a little video out in my yard uh, to talk about the other part of that. Anyway, so we know for a fact that meat production is down. We know that the um, production plants are hurting. Uh, we know the unions are taking advantage of it and uh, really putting the, uh, the squeeze on the processing plants and stuff. And, and we have literally uh, animals being euthanized because they can't sell them and they can't keep them because it costs money. It costs money to feed those animals. And you say, well, can't we give them away and all that stuff? And it's like, they need processed. And if you want everybody to process them, you got a problem. Anyway, even if we bounce back, um, it's going to be slow and we'll never uh, not be at the volumes we were when we did the shutdown. And to get back to the numbers uh, that we were before, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's it will take a lot of time. It takes time to raise cattle, uh, to bring your funds back up to uh, uh, hold you know large amounts of uh, beef and pork and chickens and all that stuff. And so uh, I think a lot of things are going to change in the future. Um, if some of you folks may have houses outside of the city and have a little bit of a yard, um, I think some of this um, video I want to dedicate to some of the things you may want to consider yourself. One is if you don't have a yard or don't want to do gardening or anything like that, um, do you have a local uh, farmer's market or local uh, farmers? that you can start dealing with directly. Um, one is the local farmers are going to be our savior, I think, in a lot of this. Um, and I'm not just talking about fruits and vegetables. I'm talking about meat, too. Um, when I lived in Washington State, um, I used to, and I'll be telling the story later, but I actually worked with farmers and actually did co-ops with people and bought a cow. I didn't actually take care of the cow. I didn't butcher the cow. I just bought it and I bought a, a, a percentage of it. And I did the same thing with pork and stuff in it. And that was back in the day. Well, I quit kind of doing that kind of stuff. In Arizona, it's a little harder to find relationships like that, but it could be done. Um, but I'm saying that we need to start looking at uh, alternative ways to get food to helping our local economies. Um, I mean, it's just a shame of uh, tons of food are being thrown away because they can't sell them. Potatoes, onions, things like that. They're just dumping them. Milk, things like that. 
if you have a yard that you can maybe start growing stuff, do planter boxes on this channel, you can see examples of what I've done. And I'm just amateur, uh, amateur guy. And some folks are really doing great things. Um, but you can see, I like, to, I like to practice what I preach. I do preach, uh, um, prepping and being prepared. And, and I can't tell you enough how grateful I was that I had two big cases of toilet paper and paper towels from Costco that we bought a long time ago. We've always kept in the prep room. I haven't, and, and every time I go to the store, I'm still seeing empty shelves. And it's not a worry because I prepped. Now I'll really be worried if I go through all that in a long, but I got so much toilet paper and paper towels that I doubt that's going to happen. But once again, I was just being prepared, practicing what I preach. And the same thing with food. Um, I thought I'd uh, uh, skip over to a little video I made in the yard and then we'll come back. So here's me <laughs> in my backyard. Hi guys, this is Ranger Rob from Easy Street. And uh, I wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk. And the reason I, I've shown my garden before, but the point is, I like this when I'm ranting or preaching, I want to make sure I practice what I preach. So today uh, on the show, um, and this is uh, pre-recorded, um, we're we going to be talking about the world changing in a way that we need to start thinking about. I, uh, I grew up in Washington, so I was always had farms and things around, but one of the things I wanted to, I'm starting to realize that with meat shortages and all the things coming up, uh, it's going to be important that we learn how to grow some of our own stuff. And yes, I've talked about growing stuff before. Those are zucchini, by the way, just going nuts. And uh, um, even if you live in the city or the outside of the city like I do, you can do things uh, even with a small yard. I don't have that big a yard and yet I can grow zucchini, I'll be, uh, I grow s strawberries and beans and uh, tomatoes and I have a whole new planter box that I did a video about over on the other side. And uh, the point being is it's time for a paradigm shift again. I remember I used to, when I lived in Washington, uh, buy and go in partnerships with people that raised small farms, uh, raised their own pigs, and I would buy like a half a pig and uh, go to the butcher and I'd get my half and I'd keep it in my freezer. And uh, I think the days are coming with like even meat to uh, start working with your local farmers and uh, maybe even working on kind of a co-op situation. And the same thing with fruits and vegetables. Uh, every region is a little different. Um, Arizona, we have kind of different crops here, but uh, uh, it's something to consider. And I really think that that's going to be the new way we do things. So one of the last things I wanted to make sure and point out being out here is uh, uh, when you learn how to garden, if you've never done it before, there's a learning curve. And uh, I've made mistakes. I've had some trouble with this year's tomatoes. I made mistakes. But uh, it's fun. At the same time, uh, what I'm really impressed with is you don't see them now because we the season's over. We had uh, sugar peas, which was in some earlier videos. And I've got two one-gallon bags of worth of frozen sugar peas in my freezer, which will feed us for a long time for many meals. Is our primary meals? No. Um, but the next thing we're going to go into is uh, potatoes and some other things starting this fall. Uh, why? Because I'm getting concerned about the, the food supply. And meat what will be available. Uh, I think inflation is going to hit it. It's going to be really expensive. But uh, I just want to point all this out because it's something all of us can do. And by the way, let me grab one of these. How's that for a beautiful little strawberry? This is a small one, by the way. And uh, I get, just to let you know what I do on my strawberries, I get like 
6 to 12 strawberries a day and we bag them and freeze them and now I've got like two gallons worth of strawberries and we do all kinds of things with strawberries yum that one's a little sour and uh, my dog likes them too so yeah anyway uh, I hope this brings the point I'm not really here to show gardening as I'm showing um, that we all need to start considering it whether you live in the city in an apartment or what there's look well I mean just the strawberries alone here I showed you um, you may be able to fit half of those on your porch in an apartment and grow some strawberries or peas or beans so uh, yeah we uh, I think we have a new life coming and I think utilizing our local farmers, uh, utilizing what you can do at your own house, no matter where you live, your climates, our climates are all different. We all can grow different things. And uh, maybe even working with the neighbors and they grow something, you grow something and you share. But uh, yeah, uh, life is changing. I think it's a, um, a permanent change coming up. And I think we all need to consider it. So uh, anyway, Thanks for listening, and back to Rob at the studio. And we are back, and I'm being attacked by a butterfly. <laughs> anyway, I'm just showing a little bit of nature in the background to kind of get us in the mood here. So, uh, some of the things that you could do in a small scale, uh, and I, I'd love to, I hope you see this video a year from now and compare it to the videos I'm doing then because. I'm working on some very big changes in my life because of what's happening. A few things I've learned in the last at least year and a half, two years, is I was a little bit of a prepper, but I'm a little more of a prepper than ever. And a situation came up, obviously, with the virus, and it proved to me how important it is. Now, granted, we didn't have power go out. We didn't lose our water. But by the way, some of that is uh, our water supply actually could be a problem because there's a shortage of CO2 because they use that to process water supply. So you, that could even still happen. But I'm not scared about it because I have a water supply you can't believe. Anyway, but the point being is what I've learned. And uh, even though I, I was skeptical, I some people look at me like, uh, wow, you're a little crazy. They don't say that anymore. But also uh, a couple of little things that, you know, you may live in a place you might be able to get away with a few chickens uh, or something like that, um, where uh, uh, you could actually have four, five, six laying hens and, and actually get your own eggs. Do you know the things you can do with eggs is amazing. And back in the Depression days, by the way, one of the biggest um, vegetables, I think it's a vegetable, um, uh, used back in the Depression days was potatoes. And so I've already ordered my 10 gallon cloth bags and I've been studying how to grow potatoes. And this fall, I'm going to start my first attempt to grow potatoes. And I'm going to do at least 10, 10 gallon bags. I'm hoping to get a lot of potatoes because what's also good about potatoes easy to grow. Second, they store long and uh, and they're so versatile. The things you can do with potatoes is amazing. And if uh, money's getting tight or food's getting too expensive or inflation has gone nuts, um, you're going to be darn glad that you can do some of your meals based off of something you grew yourself. One less trip to the grocery store. Um, that's my point. Um, if you've thought about it before, I think you better start getting more serious now. The problem is with going on is like if you look at the stock market, you say, oh, nothing's wrong. Everything's up. I don't think we have a clear picture of just how bad things can get. And it doesn't have to be that bad if you're a visionary a little bit and change your paradigm and realize how things are today, which are already changing, but before, let's say, the corona stuff, um, it's going to look a lot different 
six months from now and we're going to see the results of all this we're going to see hyperinflation um, we're going to see shortages and it's going to take a quite a while a year or two to even get back to anything that's considered normal half the people that lost their jobs or half the people are furloughed half of them are probably not going to get their jobs back and then we look at this craziness of uh businesses that people that they furloughed and they got unemployment and then the 600 dollars stimulus which only lasts till july uh, is more money than they're making from the employer and so they don't want to go back to work even when they get to reopen it's insane and people are short-sighted and so they'll stick it out and say i'll come back after my unemployment runs you know i don't get my 600 anymore um but the other part is is demand's going to be way down so if there's 50 employees at a uh, a major restaurant uh, they may only hire back 35 and, and that's going to be all across the board so we're going to have tons and tons of people of uh, not having a job after this and yeah they'll still get their unemployment without the 600 but they're going to be jobless and unemployment is uh, especially in Arizona is really low so some real realities are going to start kicking in and we're going to start seeing this stuff if you could be uh, proactive if you could be a visionary a little bit and look at the common sense and study what does all this mean I like borrowing all this money to pay all these people um, which means it's going to make our dollar weaker which means it's going to make inflation go up it's going to affect everything food cars homes clothing all everything is going to be affected if not now it's going to happen in the future and I know you can't see the future but all of us have to gamble all of us have to look ahead and plan ahead so you'll make it come out of this all right it'll be different but you could still live a very comfortable life but maybe buying your food a little differently uh, working with local farmers more than you've ever done before that's a very busy butterfly behind me <laughs> um, maybe uh, learning to be a beekeeper and get your own honey um, uh, doing things if you have enough big enough yard to do a really good garden you can actually resell some of the stuff in your garden um, there's a lot of really cool things you could do but it's different it's not the norm and hey, look at the bright side you have all those chores to do maybe you get the kids away from the video games but uh yeah i mean it's i i'm very serious how we're living today and the way things have been are, are changing and only the smart ones and I'm not talking about four-year degree smart I'm talking about practical redneck kind of stuff learning how to grow stuff learning how to work with farmers learning to get your hands dirty um, I think it's coming back if you want to live a happy life anyway food for thought think about it <laughs> you like how I said that food for thought yeah anyway after years of research and countless hours of R&D work, teams were assembled, research was presented, and the idea was put out to the public. If this could be done, the world would be amazed. Outdoor life would be changed forever. Hiking, vacation, and camping would never be the same. They got the work, they started designing, they made the product, and it's here today just for you. Yes, Ranger Rob poopy bags are finally here. They're bigger, deeper, smell like lemon, and strong. Available at Amazon at low cost and free shipping. Another thing I like to talk about today is accountability. And uh, the biggest battles we're seeing on the news right now is like, oh, the big news about a gal that uh, opened up her salon before it was time and she got got jailed for seven days and and uh, fined seven thousand dollars well that got all clarified but anyway it was pretty nasty and uh, really when it comes down to it is now as we're trying to reopen um, you know these power hungry people are trying to like regulate churches and uh, all these different organizations and giving them rules and stuff 
And really what it should be is um, what I think uh, is accountability. When I talk about accountability, I'm talking about putting the responsibility back on our shoulders. I think they should just open up all the businesses. Hopefully they use good judgment and, some, and, and given some guidelines, that's fine. But even the ones that are controversial, whether it's getting massages or getting your fingernails done or a pedicure or a, a beauty salon, put it the risk on my shoulders. Um, maybe tell those businesses, give them a across the board uh, uh, contract that they can use with people that says they waive their liability. I want to get my nails done. You don't have to worry about me getting sick. Um, and I'm not going to sue you type of thing. Um, and let me be accountable. If I want to go to a beauty salon, which obviously I don't have a really good reason for that. Um, that should be my decision and I'll take the risk and I'll go in and evaluate if I think it's safe or if I want to go see a movie or if I want to go to church or if I want to go bowling or I want to go to a public swimming pool or go hiking, fishing, boating. Let it be my decision. Let me be accountable. Why do we constantly sit back here and let the government tell us what we can and cannot do? And we keep giving away more and more of our um, liberty and freedom. When really, it's, if you want to be free, be accountable for yourself. Everything is a risk. You could be the carefulest person in the world, maybe even really paranoid about the COVID and walk outside and get hit by a bus. Not even related to anything. Life is a gamble. Life is an experience. Certain hobbies are could be dangerous. And people do them. Downhill skiers, they're taking a risk. That's their business. It's their life, their fulfillment of living. These people that constantly like want to be protected by the government. Hey, protect yourself. Do it. Stay in your apartment. Stay in your house. And we do, you know, we've learned what's going on with this COVID stuff. We know that if you already have or susceptible to something, most likely the COVID could be pretty nasty on you if you're older or have a diabetes or a heart condition. It could kill you. So can the flu. <laughs> it's not as deadly as they say it's going to be. You're probably going to get COVID sometime. I'm going to get sometime. I could have had it already. I'm not sure. Eventually, when I have a chance, I'll go get tested. But you know what? Um, I'm healthy enough. I'll probably survive it. Is it a bumpy road? I hear it is. But hey, and no, you don't catch it twice. There, that was a, a report that came out of uh, uh, China and that was debunked. I mean, you can get another version of it and stuff just like the flu. But uh, uh, yeah, you could get, you know, um, anybody. Uh, antibodies in your uh, from catching it once and at least be a little stronger the next time. And then they also got this thing what they call herd mentality type thing where a lot of people get it and uh, everybody kind of builds up a resistance to it. And that doesn't happen when you're locked up in your house. But that's my business. Yes, those like uh, nursing homes and assisted livings and stuff. We now know we need to protect them. But even them, I have a mother-in-law, 82, sitting in an assisted living. We can't go see her. Her daughter can't not see her. Can't even go in there and talk to her even with a mask or a gown or even a bubble suit. I mean, she'd do anything to be able to sit down and spend an hour with her mom because we've gone so extreme on their stuff. And I know her mom would go, well, we need to take a little bit of risk here because I'm not going to sit in this room alone all my life, the rest of my life, whatever's left of it. 
and that's her decision and she's accountable for herself too so really people put on your big boy pants <laughs> and or big girl pants and uh start being responsible for yourself tell everyone around you i'm accountable for me i'll take the risk if i want to be around 10 people in a group and have a picnic or something that's my choice if i get sick it's no different than catching a cold is no different than catching a flu if it's meant to be it's meant to be it's, people are catching this even in lockdown especially like apartments where they have some of the same air decks and all that kind of stuff um 66 percent of the people going into the hospital were actually people in lockdown regular people it wasn't people working on the lines and um you know uh I, I don't remember the governor's name, but it, he admits, it goes, that was surprising. People have uh, been locked up in their houses for all this time. They're the ones going into the hospital, 66% of them, and they're going back home when they're sick. They're not even staying at the hospital. So come on, people. Step up. Grow up. Be responsible. Be accountable. Quit letting and exist i mean just ask yourself how many times you're expecting the government to do stuff for you and i've been talking about prepping and food and growing your own stuff that's taking responsibility things are going to change step up while you can and make it easy on yourself than trying to wait to the last minute well i don't see inflation happening yet i don't see all this unemployment and i've got plenty of money coming from unemployment it's temporary you need to get beyond that and think about what's next year going to look like christmas is going to be devastating in retail people aren't going to have enough money to spend i mean it's gonna it's gonna we're gonna be hurting but we'll be okay for those of us that think ahead a little bit for those of us that s step up and say okay these are the new conditions here are the things I can do to make it better. So start making it better on yourself, people. Be accountable. Quit asking for the government to bail you out. Make some changes. Sell off things you may not need. Make changes that are going to make your life easier and more comfortable. And live. So my avid listeners, I appreciate you so much. Once again, don't forget to check out Range Rob Poopy Bags. Maybe give our station a, a donation. We'd appreciate it. I think we also have a link in the description if you wanted to give us a tip. We would appreciate it. And guys, think about what I said. And I, I know that's a little preachy, and whatever, but really you need to consider these things. Things are going to change. How are they going to change? We don't know exactly how they're going to change, but we do know from what data we have in front of us that some of the things that we were used to having may not be available as or will cost more or be harder to get and the best way to address that is step up make some changes be accountable and don't expect the government to uh, bail you out do it yourself make the changes so I want to thank you very much for listening to Easy Street. We appreciate you listening and we love your comments. Please, uh, if you're going to leave comments, uh, be responsible. Yay, nay, or whatever you want to talk about. Just be a uh, professional. We appreciate it. So anyway, time, guys, until next time, bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.